So I'm Marit Moser and I'm a neuroscientist and I'm from Trondheim in Norway at NTNU. Yeah, my name is Edvard Moser. I'm uh, also a professor in neuroscience and uh, I uh, work at the Norwegian University for Science and Technology in Trondheim. Simply it could be said that we are studying the, the brain's map of space. The um, uh, brain has an internal map that uh, allows us to find our way in the environment. It consists of a number of different cell types that all have their own functions in uh, navigation. Mm. It's kind of a GPS system in our brain. And uh, lately we have uh, just discovered a new type of cell the speedometer or the speed cell and uh, I think to, to get all these cells in place that's uh, so interesting. Maybe the breakthrough in our lab was in 2005 and we found a type of cell that we called grid cell. So a grid cell is a cell that fires in certain locations and those locations form a grid over the entire environment where you are so it is like a coordinate system that the brain uses to plot in positions in the environment. We think, but at least uh, these cells, they need to know exactly where to be active and where to be silent. These speed cells that we found, they were the last piece of the puzzle. How can you really get the correct position for each field for these grid cells? So they need uh, directional input and then it's speed input. And for the directional input there's yet another type of cell called uh, head direction cells. So these cells were actually found in, uh, in 1985 by Jim Rank. Uh, and they fire, they are active whenever an animal or a person moves in a certain direction and not otherwise. Mm -hmm. So then and uh, there's yet another type of cell, cells that fire whenever we are at borders of the environment, close to, to walls, cliffs and so on. So in that sense, the system has grid cells, border cells, head direction cells, speed cells, and they all work together, each have their own function, and they all uh, together create, create a dynamic map. Bay cells, they are the oldest ones in the older cells. <laughs> they were uh, discovered in uh, 1971 by John O'Keefe, so they have always been around. But uh, what has happened the last 10 years is that uh, suddenly it's gone so much more complex, so many more different types of cells. So it's very exciting now to study how they all work together. Yeah, so the, the, the place cell uh, is active only in one position in the room and it's extremely sensitive to the environment and to, to anything. So one major difference between those maps is that the entorhinal map, uh, the one with the grid cells, uh, each of these uh, modules or resolutions that Margaret mentioned, uh, is very stereotypic, so that if you go to a hundred different places, then uh, it will be the same map that is used every single place because cells that fire at neighboring locations in one environment will also do that in, uh, in the second room, in the third room and so on until you are in the hundredth room. And uh, in contrast then, in the hippocampus, uh, for each different place you go, the, uh, for each different room that you visit, then the relationship between the cells where they are active is completely scrambled so that you have uh, a hundred, for 100 rooms, you have 100 completely different maps uh, in the hippocampus, so it's very useful for memory um, because you can individualize them so much better. Uh, whereas in the entorhinal cortex with the grid cells, it's just the same map used over and over again. Mm. But that's good if you want to measure, if you want to measure distances, you don't want to have a hundred different measure, measure, measurement systems. You mm. have, want to have one solution that you can use everywhere. First of all, it's our brain and we have to understand our brain. So we put so much resources into all these telescopes and uh, spaceships to explore outside uh, the Earth, but we have to explore inside. Now we know there is this internal map. It has a number of different types of cells, for example, grid cells. 
but we really don't know how are these cells used to find your way. We know there is a map, it has all the information that is necessary, but how does the rest of the brain or these cells among themselves actually extract information and convert that into a movement from one place to another? Uh, that's one of the things that uh, we are interested in. I'm Magnus Moser and I'm a neuroscientist. My name is Edward Moser. I'm a neuroscientist.